Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Friday. It is January 3rd. We're going to check in with Jess to get an update on the status of that cold front that's inbound coming up. I'm so happy to be here this Friday. It's also the last Friday before kids go back to school. That's right. So hang in there, kids and uh, parents. You get a break starting on Monday. Last year, we ran one of those stories about people you know, who often have traumatic brain injury. Something is a result of that. For example, we've had stories before where people have suffered from the condition where they have a brain injury mm -hmm. and they wind up speaking with a accent that's completely foreign to them. For example, maybe somebody who lives in Louisiana and then all of a sudden has a British accent. Wouldn't that be nice? Or <laughs> someone who, you know, I, have you seen those things where they have an accident and then they come back and they have like psych, psychic powers? Right. That's very cool. But this is actually a really cool um, talent too. This one man had a horrific car crash and he says it changed his life because he's discovered this incredible new talent he had after he suffered traumatic brain injury. He's 30, he is one in 33 cases in the world. That's right. Uh, his name is Scott Melly, and what happened was is that he was in an accident in Raleigh, North Carolina, when he came to, uh, after survived the accident and was, became aware of his injuries, uh, he went, fell into a deep depression, got into all sorts of, of bad things and vices and things like that. And then he was in a craft store with his kids and he made a discovery. He had the urge to draw and to paint and then all of a sudden he has discovered that he is an artist. He has this new talent. He said he did not, he could not draw before. He didn't have this artistic talent before. He said it was the first time in four months that I saw something that I could relate to that was mine, that felt like it was mine. Uh, he's later learned he had what is called atypical acquired savant syndrome, known in the medical community as an extraordinary condition where an individual displays remarkable abilities, as we said, that they did not have before a brain injury. Yeah, he is one of 33 cases in the world. Like a painting in progress, he is still working to create his new life, hoping to help others feel lost, find beauty along the way. Look at all the works here, different mediums, including uh, chalk, and there he's doing some, some painting, but uh, unbelievable ability that has come to light for Scott Melly. If, if you suffered, God forbid, if you ever suffered a right. traumatic brain injury, what talent would you want to wake up with? Oh, gosh, I have no idea. I just would hope never to go through something like that in the first place. Speak Italian, Speak Italian. Oriana said. Okay, I, hmm. I think I like the psychic powers thing. Okay. You know, they go out to the field and they're like, somebody's here. This is right. where the lost body is. The next Long Island medium. <laughs> Let's take a look at your GMSA rundown. Tensions are extremely high between the United States and Iran after Iran's top military commander was killed in a U.S. airstrike in Baghdad. This morning, an urgent alert from the State Department. Americans being urged to leave Iraq immediately. In Australia, brush fires continue to burn in most states. More than 200 are burning, and warnings of extreme danger to come have set in motion one of the largest evacuations in Australian history. A controversial photo of Detroit firefighters posing in front of a burning house is now being investigated. The picture was posted on social media New Year's Eve. The house was vacant and considered too dangerous for crews to enter. A baby in North Texas is at the center of a life or death legal battle. A judge has now ruled that the 11th month old can be taken off of life support against her family's wishes. The first day of legal marijuana sales added more than $3 million to Illinois state coffers. Buyers started lining up as early as 3 a.m. on January 1st, despite frigid temperatures. In Washington, the federal appeals court is hearing arguments today on whether to enforce a subpoena in the House and impeachment investigation. The move would compel former White House counsel Don McGahn to testify. You all is taking a new stand for the new year. The moving and storage company plans to stop hiring smokers and nicotine users. ESPN's Ed Warder says a source told him after showing out of abundance, care and respect for Garrett, Jerry and Stephen Jones have decided Garrett will no longer be a part of the Dallas Cowboys organization. The Sunday's Gold Globe Awards. It's the first big show of Hollywood awards season. Ricky Gervais will be the host for the fifth time. If past years are any indication, he'll say something to offend someone. The daughter of the late comedian Robin Williams is getting a lot of feedback after using the popular Instagram filter. Which Disney character are you? Ah, uh, the genie from Aladdin. I love her reaction to uh, getting the genie on that app. I know. I did mine this morning. I got Dory from Dory. You know, from um, Finding Nemo. Nemo? Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> Dory. I don't feel like I look like that, but maybe it was the blue. I don't know. Maybe it was. Let's check in with Justin now outside with live cam. The sun is back. And we're expecting uh, some windier conditions, I understand, Justin? Yeah, the winds are going to pick up out of the north today, which is a problem because Mountain Cedar is already high. It may go a little bit higher. Not good information on this Friday. But uh, otherwise, we will see some sun today if you were tired of the cloud cover yesterday. 54 degrees right now at the airport, 48 Kerrville, 45 Rock Springs, 56 in Del Rio. Dew point is at 42. That number will continue to tumble with west-northwesterly winds right now at about 10. Those winds will pick up. I'd say 10 to 20 miles per hour, but gusting 20 to 25. Uh, let's take a look at the satellite picture, and you'll see that we've got plenty of sun. We're basically got some clouds off to the west, clouds off to the east, but right here in the middle, we've got sunny skies around San Antonio and much of the viewing area. Here's a look at the balling count. Wow. Mount Cedar went into the very high category today, 17,440. Mold is low. Again, we'll have to see where Mountain Cedar sits tomorrow. It may not be a pretty picture on your Saturday as far as the pollen count is concerned. 64 degrees, the high temperature today. Sunny skies, I think, later this afternoon. And some sun over the weekend. Actually, a beautiful forecast for Saturday and Sunday. We're going to talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. Guys? Thank well, you, Justin. Taking a look outside at TransGuide. Uh, it's Friday, and it looks like traffic is moving pretty Smoothly out there, that's 10 and Callahan. No accidents or traffic buildup there. And also at 10 and 1604. Well, top stories we are following today. San Antonio police are still trying to track down a man who was the suspect in a standoff overnight at a Southside apartment complex. According to police, the man had already had outstanding warrant for his arrest. Officers called to the apartment and then 100 block of Emerald Ash around 10 last night. Investigators were told that a man was intoxicated and fired shots into the air from an apartment balcony after a fight with his girlfriend. When officers arrived, they found that he had run into a different apartment. Negotiators were unable to get him to come out, so they called in SWAT. SWAT officers later forced their way into the apartment and discovered the man was no longer there. But they did find a weapon inside. Police say he will be facing additional charges once he's caught. If one of your New Year's resolutions is to add a new furry member to your family, this is a great weekend to do so. That's because Animal Care Services is offering a special discount this weekend. You can adopt a dog for only $25 and a cat for only $5. It's part of their New Year used pet special. All pets will be spayed or neutered, vaccinated and microchipped upon adoption. The special is good today through Sunday at the shelter located at 4700 in the 4700 block rather of State Highway 151. You can also find more information on ksat.com. Just search for pets. Well, in your morning headlines, Iran is responding to that U.S. drone attack that killed a top military commander. And one presidential candidate has fired all of her staff, but is not quitting the race for president. Plus, car goes flying off a cliff in a video you have to see to believe. And we say good Friday morning to David Sears. A couple of wild rides to start your weekend off with, so buckle up. Okay. <laughs> Get to it in just a second. Hey, after the killing of the leader of the Quds, Qasim Soleimani, by the U.S. during that drone strike that took place last evening in Baghdad, there's already a new leader. He is Major General Ismail Kwani. He was quickly appointed by Iran's Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei, who vowed to avenge the death of Soleimani. Here's an interesting move by one of the Democratic candidates for president. Marianne Williamson has gotten rid of her entire campaign staff, laid them off, but she says she's not quitting the race. In a statement, she said she can't afford a traditional campaign staff, but is not suspending her campaign. All this happening for Williamson and her staff right after Julian Castro pulled out of the race yesterday. All right, let's go to Atlanta and look out. Move out of the way. That is a big 18-wheeler, the driver of the big rig, ripping right through the parking lot of a quick trip convenience store. First, the rig hit a car, then it lost control, went into that parking lot. And this is a look at the damage. Ten cars pretty messed up. One person taken to the hospital. Driver of the truck was hauling 5,500 pounds of rolls of paper. Cheers. There goes two on top of each other. And there goes three more over there where, the, where they entered the parking lot. Tow truck drivers are busy. The police are still investigating. and don't know if the driver is going to face any charges yet. And finally, pay close attention to this video. You are about to see an SUV just go flying by. Literally, watch. Here it comes. Are you ready? Right there. Look at that. Did you see that? Show it to you again here in just a second. That SUV went off a 100-foot cliff on the coast of California. 
It happened Monday on Highway 1 near Graywell Cove State Beach. That's just south of San Francisco, about 30 miles or so. Apparently happened on Monday. The San Mateo County Sheriff's Office released a video taken from a dash cam of another passenger car. The Coast Guard called in. Other agencies called in. So far, the investigation has turned up tire tracks leading to the cliff. They've also found car parts, but they're not even sure if any of those car parts belong to this car. But so far, no driver, no passenger, and no definite car parts to that vehicle. Well, that, so that, it's a mystery. What a horrible ending. Yeah, and it's a 100-foot cliff, and below the water is 40 feet deep. So, and they were, they had the uh, Coast Guard out there with a chopper and everything, and they were looking, and I had to call off the, the search for... Sounds like they're going to have to send in divers or salvage teams to yeah, see where that car's crazy, at. Somebody is found. All right, thank you, David. Right now, we're at 908, 54 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. 2020 is kicking off to a busy start at the courthouse. Several high-profile cases are on the docket in Bear County for the first 60 days of the year. Our Paul Venema joins us in studio to tell us more about these cases. Well, they tried, but they just couldn't get it done. Spurs not starting 2020 on a positive note. They fell to the thunder last night. We'll break down what went wrong and what the silver and black need to change moving forward. And stocks right now, the world markets rattled by rising tensions between the United States and Iran. The Dow is down a shocking 233 points at 28,633.
Welcome back. We are at uh, Friday morning, 9, 12, 54 degrees and another cold front on the way. Yeah, we've got a front blowing through, so it's picking up the north winds. And if the SEC would allow it, I would let you guys give me a few words to describe how you feel about mountain cedar. But I think I know the answer to oh, that. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> My mountain cedar face. It, it may yeah. include <laughs> expletives is what you're worried about. Yeah, it may. Ah, that stopped us before. Mm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> mountain, <coughs> this is how I this is very enough. Very <laughs> feel about mountain cedar. Kicking it in hardcore. Take a look <laughs> at the uh, mountain cedar graph here. So. I guess if there's any bit of good news here, we're starting to get close to the peak. Today's count is at 17,440, which is a, the very heavy category. We typically peak mid-January, so give it another two weeks, and maybe we'll start to see counts come down a little bit. But uh, I have a feeling uh, tomorrow's going to be bad, too. Look at the last two weeks. These are the counts, and we've basically been high just about every day but three, and we've had two days where we've been in the very high category, including today. So not a great situation there. And again, with the northerly winds kicking in with this front that's moving through, I would imagine that tomorrow's count's not going to be nice either. Take a look at the time lapse. Really beautiful this morning. We had some mid high level clouds moving through made for a great sunrise. 54 degrees right now. Dew point is at 42. This number is going to keep dropping with west northwesterly winds at about 10 miles per hour. But we've basically got full sun at this point. A lot of cloud cover yesterday, but now we're uh, seeing the sun. Uh, there are some clouds out west. Some of these may rotate in as we still have an upper level low that's got to pass by. But if we do see those clouds, I think it'll be a mixture of sun and clouds. Not a, not a big deal. And temperature wise, 54 degrees at the airport, 53 in New Braunfels, a little cooler in the hill country, 47 right now in Junction, 45 in Rock Springs, 56 out there in Del Rio. The forecast high temperature today, I'd say mid 60s. Not bad at all. There will be some 50s in the hill country uh, with mostly sunny skies for most of us. Wind gusts, we're starting to see some stronger gusts there around Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs, gusting to 25. We'll start to see that here around San Antonio, too, I think, as we get into the afternoon hours. And the wind gusts will be anywhere from 20 to 25, and I think we'll keep that going through about the 10 o'clock hour before winds start to calm a little bit. And so uh, it will be breezy, maybe a little bit breezy tomorrow, too. Reason for that, we've got this upper level low that's still got to pass by. Interestingly enough, uh, there's enough energy out in West Texas. There's a little bit of snow in the higher elevations there out in West Texas, falling in the mountains around Davis Mountains and uh, near Marfa. But this storm system pretty quickly gets out of here. And by 5 o'clock, we're on the backside of this thing. And that means we're going to have a great weekend. Both Saturday and Sunday look fantastic. A lot of sun and very comfortable temperatures. 64 degrees, the high temperature today. We'll call it breezy. Northwesterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. And the extended forecast, 70 tomorrow, 73 Sunday, 72 Monday. We'll get a little more cloud cover on Monday. No big deal. Cold front comes through, but it doesn't bring us any rain. Just kicks up the winds again on Tuesday, which means it could be another bad Mount Cedar day. But Wednesday, Thursday, we'll see an increase in moisture. Maybe some rain towards the end of that seven-day forecast. But at the moment, no rain chances over the next seven days. That 17,000 count, is that the highest we've seen this season so far? No, we actually had, a, I think, a count around 19,000 about a week ago. But mm. uh, it's possible it could go higher. Let's hope it does not. Take your Allegra, your Zyrtec, your Claritin. If you have any, even if you don't know if you have allergies to mountain cedar, <laughs> it might get you. It might. Be prepared.